So this is a more complicated example of a strongly connected component. It's not really harder, it's just longer. So therefore a lot of people think of it as harder. They say, wow, the graph is huge, um, this will take forever. So we're going to go through it together and we'll figure it out. It shouldn't actually be that bad. Starting at A, as depth first search, A is 1, B is ne the next lowest, so that's 2. Uh, we pick C as the next one, so that's 3, then 4 for G, G, can go to H, so that's 5, then D is 6. S D can't go anywhere, so we put the denominator as 7, backtrack, can H go anywhere? No, it can't, so that'll be 8. Can G go anywhere new? No, it can't, so that's 9. Can C go anywhere new? No, it can't, so that's 10. We look at B. Turns out B can go somewhere new. It could go to E or F. We choose E because E is the next lowest alphabetically. So E is 11. Then E can go to F, which is 12. Um, e can, F can then go nowhere new, so we backtrack. So F is 13. E is 14, B is 15, and A is 16. Now, to really know you've done it all right, everything should have a numerator and a denominator. So if, if one's missing one, uh, clearly you've done something wrong. Back up, slow down, and try again. So now you have your, your numerators and your denominators. So the next rule is you look at the... Uh, denominators and you ignore the numerators entirely and you choose the lowest denominator of each and every one so let's do let's make our sequence and we know that starting at a because a is 16 the next lowest is or the next highest is 15 which is B 14 is E and 13 which is F F also has 12, so the next lowest would be 11. E has 11, so the next lowest would be 10. C has 10, so there we go. Then 9 would be next lowest, which is G. Then H has 8, and D has uh, 7. Now 6 is taken care of, and actually we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in our sequence, which means we know we're done. Now, here comes the tricky part. We're going to reverse the graph, and this really and truly can be the hardest part of the whole thing, because you have to make absolutely certain that you do not accidentally um, keep an arrow the same, because if you keep a single arrow as the same thing, it'll mess up your entire answer, and you'll be entirely wrong. So here we go. Let's uh, um, reverse the graph real quick. Let's see, we've got um, these two that reverse, they go the opposite way. And we've got um, this one which goes the opposite way. These technically don't need reversing because um, they both go to each, each other, but just for visual aesthetics, I will <coughs> excuse me, reverse it. So here we go, we go like this, and then like this. And we can reverse this one. And we can reverse this one, and we can reverse this one, and this one. There really is no order in reversing them, you just reverse them. As long as you get them all, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we've reversed them all. So, for the final uh, part of this um, tutorial, all we have to do is now identify our strongly connected components. We do that by looking at our sequence. So let's take a quick look and see what we've got. We have A, B, E, F, C, G, H, D. So starting at A, we mark A down. And where can A go? Turns out A can go nowhere, so A in and of itself is a strongly connected component. Yay! Mark it off the list. Then we've got B. Now, B 
can go to F, which makes F part of the strongly connected component. F can go to E, so that makes E part of a strongly connected component. And E can go to B, which can in turn go nowhere. Well, actually, technically speaking, E can't go to B because B uh, has already been visited. So that in and of itself is a strongly connected component. And it just so happens that these are right in order, so we can mark them all off the list. Perfect. So then starting at C now, um, we're choosing our number based off of what's next available in the sequence. We look at C. And C can go to B. But it turns out it can't go to B because we've already marked it off the list and it's already been used in the strongly connected components. So it can't go to B. That's why we made our sequence. We know where it can and cannot go based off of this specific uh, sequence. So C can go to G though. That's free. It hasn't been used. And G can go to F. Oh wait, no. It can't go to F because uh, F has already been used as well. So that leaves us with it going nowhere which means this in and of itself is a strongly connected component. So we've used C and we've used G. So now we have H. We look at H. H cannot go to G because it's part of the last uh, strongly connected component, but it can go to D. So we write down H and D, and you can see, as you probably guessed, we've already used F and E. So it can go nowhere else, making this the last strongly connected component. So the strongly connected components are A, B, F, E, C, G, and H, D. And that's the answer, guys. So to this one graph, um, that's the answer. So it, it is a little tedious, but just be really sure you're careful with um, your backtracking when you backtrack and get uh, the numbers um, here and then be really, really careful when you reverse the arrows. A lot of people try and do it mentally, but honestly, if you, you want full points on a test or something like that, it's better just to slow down and make sure you're doing it right, because it'll mess up your whole sequence and therefore your entire answer. So, uh, hopefully you guys uh, figured it all out, you understand what's going on now. I tend to get these problems confused with the articulation point problems, just because they both have this fraction type um, thing going on where there's a low or a high or in this case it's just you know the depth first search so you gotta really make sure you make a distinction between the two and not get the algorithm confused in your head but otherwise that's it guys so I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and maybe I helped somebody out thanks for your time bye